You are sacred love. That's all that you are. What a great memory. What a great way to remind ourselves of who we truly are. Today we're into the sixth week of the Keys to the Kingdom series. And this week happens to be on blessings. And I thought, if I can't do a message on blessings without notes, I need to go back to school. (laughs) And then I also reminded myself, hey, I'm not the only one who gets the blessings. We all get the blessings. So this talk is a presentation of both uh, thoughts, my thoughts about blessings, but also from people from the class are going to be sharing as well. So blessings translates into gratitude. And I think that one of the things that uh, most people are attracted to unity about is the acts of gratitude that we live by. I don't know about you, but I came from a background that taught us that God was separate from us. Well, God was there, and God ruled over everything, but there were outside forces doing things to me. And that outside force was Satan, or it was God. It was depending really how devoted to God that that outside force affected me. And then in unity, I learned this wonderful thing about how I am co-creating my world with God. I am co-creating my world with God. And the way that I do that is through my thoughts. I co-create my world through my thoughts. Now, that was, that really spoke to me on an uh, intuitive level. When I heard that for the first time, it was like, oh, yes, yes. I've been looking for that message all my life. And on the other hand, I was like, holy crap, I got a lot of work to do. (laughs) Because I've been blaming the world for everything that's been going on with me. And it really had nothing to do with the world. It was my relationship with the world. And as I began to own my thoughts and my actions, I started co-creating a different world. Now, like you, if you had that experience, you came by it honestly. You were taught that way from um, society and your families and your churches and your schools. You had a whole collective experience of people affirming that with you. And then when you step out of that box, wow, it's somewhat a lonely world. So. I'm looking at, and I'm taking this actually through David Owen Ritz's book, Keys to the Kingdom, uh, these thoughts about how um, we are responsible, who we are, are our thoughts. And Jesus said in Mark 9, all things are possible to him that believeth. And in Matthew 9, he said, according to your faith, will it be done to you? And then in Luke 18, he said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. So basically what Jesus is saying, what we put our faith on, what we believe in, is what manifests. And how we do that is what manifests in our lives. And truthfully, if if we're going to believe in some sort of lack or or persecution, that is what's going to come. And if we believe in abundance, if we believe in the Holy Spirit, if we believe in the power of love, that is what comes. The Buddha says, we are what we think. All that arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Speak or act with a pure mind, and happiness will follow you as your shadows unshakable. The enlightened ones in our American experience, Ralph 
Waldo Emerson said, as a man thinketh, so is he, and as a man chooseth, so is he, and so is his nature. And Henry David Thoreau says, the universe constantly and obediently answers to our conceptions, answers to our thoughts, answers to how we perceive. The universe will manifest as you perceive the world to be. Which is really great because here at Unity, we know that God is all good. We know the universe is a benevolent, loving, abundant universe. And we know that that supply is always available to us and coming to us when we open ourselves up to it. Charles Fillmore, he's the co-founder of Unity Movement, says, God's greatest gift to man is the power of thought through which he can incorporate into his consciousness the mind of God. So God's mind is always, we always have that access to it. It is always available, ready, willing. It wants to be a part of our lives as we release and let go of all the ego and accept it into our lives. I remember Sharon Connors used to say something that always kind of like me, and that was simple, isn't it? Not easy. Simple, not easy. So David Owen Ritz says, that which you focus and dwell upon with a feeling of love and gratitude will tend to multiply and attract. This is what we teach. This is what we live by. We strive to live by. This is, what, this is why we come every Sunday morning to be reminded that outside in the world with all the mucky muck that's going on and all the images and flashes of negativity, flashes of the unreal, it seems so real, but it's really the unreal, that we come to the truth, and that is when we, multiply, when we give and express love, we are multiplying and attracting that same love. This is the greatest gift we can give because everyone benefits, especially ourselves. And I love a gift that I get to benefit from. It's almost like the cosmic slot machine, but every time you pull that lever, you're a winner. You are a winner. So, David Owen Ritz also says that there's four principles about living in gratitude. And the first one is being conscious of the good in your life. Being conscious of the good in your life. Now, that really just means opening your eyes and your awareness to what's going on because I would say most of us live in a pretty good universe. When we stop and think about it, our universe is pretty good. But sometimes we have to stop and think about it. We have to stop and remember, oh, breath comes in and out of our bodies naturally. I don't have to think about that. And blood circulates through our bodies naturally. I don't have to think about that. And food grows on trees. Of course, we put some effort and energy into harvesting and, and planting that and farming that. But it is the consciousness that the universe is providing all around us. The second thing, he says, is praise the good in your life. Now, it's one thing to see it. It's another thing to praise it, to say, you are good in my life. You are good in my life. Everything is good in my life. The tree is good in my life. The sunshine is good in my life. The heat, despite its uncomfortableness sometimes, is good in my life. It takes our decision. This is how we're co-creating. Our decision to acknowledge it, to experience the blessing of it, to understand that it is a part of our lives and it serves us. It serves us dearly and good. The third thing he says is share your good with others. 
The people that I am most attracted to in life are the people who are constantly giving. These are the people, they're not giving me things, they're not giving me tangible items, they're giving me love, they're giving me acknowledgement, they're giving me their tenderness. They're saying to me, you're important to me. I love you. I want you in my life. You mean something to me. They're sharing their good with me. And they're sharing their good with everybody. And that is, when I think sharing our good with others, that is being present, open, and acknowledging that all around us is good. And to go up to the other and say, I am so glad you're in my life. I realized when I did that, there was no one in front of me. <laughs> I am so glad that you are in my life. <laughs> Principle number four, look for the good in all things, even the negative. This is the hard one. This is the toughie. Because it's really good to praise good and to feel joyful about good when it's all hunky-dory, when it's all lovey-dovey and <clears throat> the world all seems to be going your way. But there are times, there are times when the world doesn't quite go in the way that we thought it was going to go. And that the result is different than we expected or wanted. Sometimes there's unpleasant feelings that arise. Some experiences are just downright horrible. But it is our job. It is our duty as we came to this planet to look for the good in all things. Now, when I'm up against, when whatever appears bad or negative is right here, I don't really see the good. But as I get distance from it, as time moves away, as I start understanding my relationship to that one seemingly blocked uh, piece in my life, I start understanding and seeing the good. I see what it is teaching me. I'm seeing how this opens my heart and my mind. I see the experience that I'm gaining from this. One of the things that I've been privileged in being in relationship with all of you is hearing some of your stories from your past. And you guys really have some sad stories. Truly, there, there has been tragedy within this congregation for, for individuals. And yet, each one of you, in distance, have been able to see the good in what came out of that. You're not praising the negative in any way, shape, or form. But you're praising the power that came from within you in that situation, that you became a more powerful, resilient individual. You became wiser. You got direction in a way that you would never have gotten direction before. So we look for the good in all things, all things, even the negative. I'm going to say one more thing about that. In this time, it seems confusing. It's, when we turn on the news, it seems confusing. And sometimes we perceive that bad is happening, neg negative is happening. I, don't, I can't say that I know the good that is coming from all that appears to be chaotic. But I have faith that it is. I have faith that despite what I see and what I am experiencing in this moment, that good is coming forward. And it is adding to my individual power. It's adding to each and one of yours individual powers. And that's why it's so important that you're right here on this planet right now. 
You are making change. And that's another sermon altogether, which I will give at a later date. I'm going to invite some of the, our participants from the Keys to the Kingdom to come forward. I'm going to bring Barbara up first. Um, we're talking about gratitude, and uh, I posed to each one of them um, to share something on their hearts about gratitude and experience or whatever. And, and I even told them that if they couldn't think of something, I had one for them <laughs> because of what I get to see. I get to see the blossom. Sometimes when you're in the middle of blossoming, you don't, you're not feeling it, and you're not seeing it. But I get to see the blossom. Okay, blossom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, I've come to realize over the years that things that have happened were supposed to happen. There were really no mistakes in it. And, you know, my role in it was that I had to learn from it. I learned through it through trial and error, through some risk taking, and being determined enough to let my shyness go behind me so that I could move ahead. My learning in the process allowed me to um, really learn about myself and look at the value that I now bring to the people that I, I associate with and I work with. I can assure you it was not easy. <laughs> it was a painful experience at times, but the education really was um, what really has brought me to, to this time in my life where I realize I have so much more to offer. Robert was gracious in sharing that part with me. And in doing so, um, I had to step out of my own way and accept that I have greater things to have happen and, and how much appreciation I have for all that I've been through. So thank you. Mm, bless you, dear. Kathy Cronin, where are you? So Barbara didn't tell you that she's been a part of a bit. She's worked her business. How many years now, Barbara? 26 years, and now she's franchising it. She's realized she gets the power of it. She gets to, she under, she's always knew, known this. She's always known how powerful the information is. And now she's been able to put it out there and others are now, are now teaching it. Thank you, Robert. Um, so I could tell you all the times in my life that I'm grateful for, but I don't want to bore you. So the thought that really comes to my mind in talking today is the saying that the rich get richer and the poor get poor. And most of us think of that as money but I see that as the blessings in life. I was a daddy's little girl. I was a spoiled brat. Whatever I wanted, I whined for it or threw a temper tantrum, and daddy got it for me. So as I grew up as a spoiled little girl, I still have gone around demanding things in my life. As I grew in my Christ consciousness and learned that the more I whined about things or played the victim role, the less I had in my life, the less fulfilled I felt. And more, when I became more appreciative of the little things that I did have and the good things that came my way and the thank yous that were given to me and the things that I appreciated, I grew more open and my glass stopped being half empty and is overflowing with so many blessings. I mean, it's just, is amazing and it's sort of like we shared was at some point in time when I didn't get what I wanted like a job I had applied for and I was disappointed about it somewhere down the line I learned that that really was not the best thing God had a better plan for me and was going to take me in a better direction and right now in my life I'm so overfilled with such joy and happiness and gratitude that I just am constantly saying, thank you, God, for everything that you've brought to me, you've given me. So I thank everybody here for listening to my story and the opportunity to share it. And thank you, Robert. Thanks, sweetie. I'm going to invite Kathy Richmond to come down. So, you know, as, as Kathy was explaining or sharing about being grateful for all things, I've seen you folks as masters of this. <clears throat> Reverend Ann could teach, she could mentor a course on living in gratitude. 
Angie Hickey could mentor a chorus on living with gratitude. You exhibit this in your daily lives. This is who you are. This is a part of, of, of your DNA. Thank you, Robert. I first want to show my gratitude to Jody for singing Sacred Love. I asked him a few weeks ago, could you sing that song? I love it. And I was so excited to hear him sing it. Thank you, Jody. So after taking five of the seven classes in Keys to the Kingdom, uh, I felt like I wanted to pick one key that really spoke to me, and that was building a new awareness. And we learn, we all have a burp, our personal belief systems, a set of deeply held convictions that color our perception of reality. And there are seven spiritual truths of abundance in key number three. And trust number seven is what I want to dwell on. Your inner guidance will lead you toward the fulfillment of your vision. Visioning and prayers are like sun and rain to your seed idea. So my job is to be a good gardener for nourishing it and making room for its growth. And know that everything that happens is in the process. There's no, there's no coincidences. It's all significant. So, like many of you, I didn't come from a family like the, the Cleavers, right? While my dad had some similarity to Ward Cleaver, my stepmother who raised me was no Joan Cleaver. She was more like Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest, okay? But my faith and my inner guidance, I used to sit at night and I would kneel at my bed and say my prayers. So they brought me an awareness of how to be a loving and devoted mother when I became a mother to my three amazing sons. Years later, I became a child advocate. And what I saw, what I felt, was the children I was advocating for were feeling being treated in foster care the way I was as a stepchild. And I thought, ah, oh, there's, there's something here for me. I had to go through that so I could feel sensitive to these children. So I became a child advocate, and uh, that led me to fight for these children and their rights. And not only that, it created an awareness and fueled a fire in me that I could start a foster agency, agency which I did in 1998. That just came out of nowhere. I wasn't looking for that. It came to me and it was so profound, I moved on it. And so I ran the agency for 15 years. It's still going very strong. And we literally raised the standard of tell me why I should entrust this beautiful child to you. And that's all it was. And we screened the heck out of these people so that we only got the finest for our babies. So I never set out. As, a, as this for a vision for myself, but I believe having been through the many years as a child of hell, that God gave me the tools to use this awareness to save innocent and vulnerable foster children who were much like I was as a stepchild. They're now in loving families where they are able to heal and able to know God's love. So. These are the keys. I made one for each of the keys. But for me, I wanted to focus and share what I learned from three. And remember that everything that happens is part of a process. And there are no coincidences in this life. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> I love how you demonstrate, Kathy, that through the pain, through the pain comes the victory and how your experience of pain <clears throat> has created <clears throat> a safe world for so many people because of that. And now Miss Veronica. Good morning, precious friends here at Unity. I wrote a little story about myself, and the Holy Spirit told me when I was sitting and praying here this morning, I needed to do something different, so I'm trusting the Holy Spirit 
that this is all going to be beautiful and perfect for each one of you. The Holy Spirit asked me to bring my story back into present time, into this moment with each one of you in this beautiful church in front of our blessed Jesus and all his beautiful children. Can you hear me okay? Which is each one of you. So gratitude for me this Sunday morning is, I am so grateful that we all share the same heart of God and that we are all his gift, no exception, each and every one of us. We are all made in the image and the likeness co-creating each and every moment in this loving, magical kingdom and in this magnificent church of which we are all sitting in. Gratitude is very powerful. It multiplies the good at hand. Life is good, fun, an everlasting adventure even when some moments don't seem quite like it. Every challenge and problem in our lives has a gift. We just need to reach in, take it, and discover the magic in it. Everything and every one of us has a part to play in this, to serve each one of us. Therefore, I am so grateful that we are all sharing, hand in hand, this journey back to God. How blessed we all are, and how grateful I am blessed to be able to witness your beautiful path at this glorious time. Thank you, thank you, God. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So our hope is that today you walk out of here fully aware of all that you can be grateful for in your lives, knowing that you are surrounded in love, that you are embraced by the Holy Spirit, that wherever you walk, God is, that the world is good, and that we continue to open our eyes to experience and see that clearer. Will you join me as we pray? Loving God, thank you. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for revealing yourself to us as we go about our days that we sent you in all all of nature in our relationships in the world that we sent you from our past and into our future we thank you dear God for the awareness of gratitude in all things and we affirm that in those moments when we begin to stray that you gently remind us that you are there loving us caring for us and that we come back on course standing in gratitude we give thanks and praise amen Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive 
our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.